You remember a few videos ago when I said I might be able to have some small amount of grudging respect for Venom Fang X because of his stance on homosexuality? Well, you can forget about it. Let's do this. So everybody's best darling little friend, Venom Fang X, has gone and made a video clarifying his position on homosexuality. And unfortunately, I went and made a couple of incorrect assumptions about his position that led me to believe he was rather more tolerant than he was. Let's have a look. Hello YouTube. I've been asked for a long time to make a video regarding the Bible and homosexuality. I'm aware that there is probably a very diverse group of people watching this video people who may be homosexual or may not be people who are Christians and who may not be so with that being said it's going to be difficult I imagine to address everyone's concerns regarding this extremely important and controversial issue so I'm going to do my best to treat this topic with fairness and yet maintain my convictions as a Christian I think it'll come as no real shock to anybody to discover that of those two, he really only manages to do the latter. Now, to be fair, he goes really in-depth. I, I mean, his video's kind of long. But I'm not so sure that he treats the subject fairly. Because, as he's basically just said, he is quite biased in favor of the Christian viewpoint. And, as we'll see, it doesn't necessarily have the validity he thinks it does. Let's move on. So, I've had the opportunity over the last few years to speak with many representatives of the homosexual community regarding this issue, and I feel like they've left the conversation feeling that my approach was much better than, well, some of the popularized views, such as this disgusting God hates fags approach, which many so-called Christians use. And you see my dilemma here. He kind of makes you want to, to respect the guy. I mean, you know, the whole Fred Phelps, God hates fags things. I mean, that is bad. And the fact that he's against that is wonderful. But unfortunately, there's more. I, un I understand that not everyone watching this video believes in Jesus Christ or, or believes in God. But this is a Christian video. And I have to say, so what? I mean, come on, think about it, Sean. Unless you can prove that what's in this book is factual, unless you can show me in a non-faith-based way that this is true and I should take it seriously, I have no reason to treat your video as anything other than your own personal opinion. I mean, I'll try to critique it on its own terms, but I don't know how much you expect that of me, because, you know, I just I don't buy what you're selling. What I'm hoping to address is the misrepresentations that so-called Christians have, have used in attempting to tackle the homosexual issue, which I feel has been a disservice to what the Bible actually teaches. Well, let's suppose, Sean, that you do in fact get your way, and this video becomes the go-to video for what Christians really think about homosexuality. Okay, now what? I mean, Christians think it, and they can't prove that any of it's true because it's all faith-based anyway. And so, why should any of us follow it? Why should any of us be on your side when, truthfully, what you have to say, it may not be as bad as God hates fags, but it's still not good. So why should we be on your side? Explain that one to me. We cannot choose our attractions. Being gay couldn't possibly be a choice. The Bible doesn't teach that it is. In fact, the Bible teaches clearly that it isn't. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But imagine you're walking down the street and you see someone you find attractive. That's not premeditated. That's just something that springs up within you. We are wired to be uh, attracted to certain things. We are sexual beings. Look, I know you're going to address this later, but let me go on record now saying that if your God wants to punish people for following through on their nature, which he gave them, I'm sorry, that God's an asshole. And I'm just glad he doesn't exist. And so, a homosexual who's attracted to the same sex, that's just the way they are. They were born that way, the Bible says. The Bible says that we were born in sin, sinful from the time our mother conceived us. Well, I don't think homosexuality is sin. And I also don't think your God exists. So, where does that leave us? 
A homosexual is not a homosexual willingly. They're, they can't choose their nature. To, in, a, in a sense, they're a homosexual against their will. Because if they could choose, well then, they could just choose to be straight. Newsflash, Shawnee boy. I like being a lesbian. I tried being straight once. I had a boyfriend back in 2002, and while he was a very nice guy, it wasn't me. And I didn't really enjoy it that much. I mean, you know, I, don't get me wrong. I thought he was a great guy. I really did. But no, no, I prefer other women. That's just all there is to it. Why would I choose to be straight? Why would I? If I don't like it, if it sucks, if it's no fun, why would I do it? Now, that doesn't mean you're going to agree with everything that I say, and I may even offend you. <coughs> Yet, I'm not telling you that, number one, that God's love is not available to you. I'm not saying that God hates you. And nor am I saying that the homosexual is uh, any more immoral than, than any other group. Maybe not. But you are saying that we've been kind of handed a raw deal by your creator, assuming the fucker exists. I mean, basically what you're saying is that we have this flaw that makes us want something that we're not allowed to want. And if we try to get it, well, then we're going to hell. But if we don't try to get it, we'll spend our entire lives miserable because we don't get to actually do what makes us happy and doesn't hurt anybody. But, you know, we still have to follow this mandate to, to be straight all the time, even though it hurts us. And we have to do so... Not not with the guarantee that, sure, we'll have a miserable life, but then we'll have a, a wonderful eternity in paradise. We're not actually told that by anybody but fallible humans who can't prove that what they're saying about the afterlife is true. So basically, we have a choice. We can either try to be miserable our entire lives on the potentially false hope that we will have a wonderful eternity, or we can do what makes us happy and doesn't hurt anybody and take the risk of going to an eternal hell for what? Not actually being bad people. Come on, one way or another, your plan sucks. Think about it, Venom. We all need to be aware of our biases. I admit, I'm a Christian, so I have a biased view of homosexuality because I'm coming at it from a biblical perspective. Well, then let me ask you, Venom. Have you ever looked at it from the other point of view? And have you ever considered that maybe your biblical perspective is completely freaking wrong? I mean... It's a possibility, right? You've considered that, right? And so it's the homosexual community who's lobbying for things like gay marriage, because that's what they want to do. That's how they want to go about making what they want socially acceptable. And I can understand that. Everyone wants to justify their views. And yet, at the same time, we do need to be careful that we're not attempting to justify something that is unjust. Unjust, Sean? Really? How on earth is it unjust to allow people who love each other and who are causing no harm whatsoever to have their union codified by the government? How does that make any sense? What's wrong with gay marriage? What harm does it do? And why on earth would God even be against it? It makes no sense. I'm sorry, but your position is pretty arbitrary. Now, what are the conditions for making something unjust? Who determines right from wrong? If you're asking from a biblical perspective, obviously the answer is God. Well, I'm not thinking from a biblical perspective, Sean, and I'm not going to until someone can prove to me that God exists by making faith no longer a factor. How many times do I have to say that one before it sinks in? But the fact is that you religious people who, who think gay marriage is wrong or against God or whatever, you want to have that codified into the law. You want to make it so that everyone has to obey the Bible, whether they believe it or not. I mean, if you personally don't feel that way, Sean, a lot of religious people do. And if you can't understand why that's wrong, why forcing biblical beliefs on people is wrong when they're not believers, well, I'm sorry, but you've got a lot to learn. And so, if we grant that God and the Bible are true, then God is the one who gets to tell us right from wrong. Well, wait a minute. Let's assume for a moment the Bible is true. Why does that mean that God's right? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, sure, okay, it says God's infallible. Well, that doesn't mean God can't be a complete dick. Doesn't mean God can't be a bigot. I mean, you want to say that God is love? 
What kind of asshole God creates a bunch of people, makes them homosexual, and says, don't follow your nature, even if it doesn't cause any harm, even if you enjoy it, while I say it's wrong, ha ha, neener, neener. I mean, how can you look at a God like that and not think, man, what a dick? I mean, seriously, Sean, even if the Bible is true, I, I don't see why I should follow God's morality at all. I mean, any more than I should follow yours or Skippy down the hall. Why, why should I follow anyone's morality if it doesn't seem right, if I think it causes harm, if I think it's bad for people? Explain that to me. Why, why should I follow God even if God turns out to be the creator? Explain it. I, I, I've never understood that. Now, why would homosexuality be, be wrong if two consenting adults have agreed to partake in this relationship? The first thing I'd like to point out is just because two adults content, consent to something does not itself make it right. For example, two adults can get together and decide, you know what, we're going to murder someone today. That, Sean, is a terrible example. Because you're not talking about two people. You're talking about three. The two who consented to commit murder, and the third who did not consent to be the victim. So your, your example is terrible. It, it's just, it doesn't work. It's, it's not reasonable. It's, it doesn't fit the, the criteria. Now, if you were to get two people together and one said, I want to die, and the other said, I want to kill, and they decided, hey, yeah, that's okay. You get to, to kill me, and, and we're both happy. Well, that's kind of a gray area. Let's not even get into that shit, because we're not even talking about that. What we are talking about are two people who get together, who, who love each other, who cause each other no harm, give each other pleasure and love their entire lives, and you're going to say that that is wrong? Really? And your God is going to say that's wrong? Your God's a dick, dude. Seriously. Now you say, well, it doesn't hurt anyone. Well, is hurting someone the only condition by which something becomes wrong? From a biblical perspective, well, the answer to that's clearly no further cementing the notion that your god is, in fact, a complete dick. Because hurting someone is the only reason something should be wrong. There's no reason something should be wrong in principle. Seriously. It, that doesn't make any sense at all. We are to be reflections of the image of God, and God never lies. So when we lie, even if we never hurt anyone, we have defiled the image of God, and so we've actually sinned against God. Which sounds to me like your god's got a serious ego problem, frankly. Dude's a bit image conscious, is he? From a biblical perspective, that is internally coherent. Although from a position of logic, reason, and evidence, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Now, I can think of all kinds of ways you could go about doing things that most people would say are wrong without hurting people. I could murder someone so quickly, or even in their sleep, so that they never get hurt. They don't even know what happened to them. Sean, hurt doesn't necessarily mean physical pain. Hurt can just be loss. The, the loss of a loved one hurts me. The loss of my life would hurt me, even if you did it so that I didn't feel any physical pain. So what I can't tell is are you being dishonest and taking the word hurt and messing around with it, prevaricating with that definition, just the way that you had the two consenting adults who consent to murder a non-consenting third? Or are you just that stupid? I can't tell which it is. That doesn't make it right, just because I did it without hurt. And you can tell a lie and not hurt anyone, or steal something and not... You can do many things without hurting anyone, but I think we'd still say that they're wrong. And at least from a biblical perspective, these things are wrong because they violate the very nature of God. They violate the very character of God, which we are meant to reflect. Meant to reflect. Well, given that as near as I can tell, your God appears to be selfish, arbitrary, and tyrannical, do you really want me to reflect that image? Really? So why is homosexuality wrong according to the Bible? It's very clear if you just look at male and females that they were designed to work together in a sexual context. I mean, I don't need to argue for that. That's just, that's the, the reason we're here. If that didn't happen, if it didn't work that way, we, we wouldn't be here. All right, Sean, let's consider for a moment this idea. Suppose there really is a God, and that God really did write a holy book, but for some reason, the version you've got is wrong. 
that maybe it's a different God, or maybe God wrote down one Bible and then stood aloof while everyone else fucked up that particular Bible. I don't know. But let's suppose for a moment that your holy text is just not correct. And let's further suppose that homosexuality is actually a guard against overpopulation. That the reason some people are homosexual is because, well, there's just too many people on the earth and this is a safety valve. And there's some evidence for that. They've discovered that the more the more male children, anyway, that a woman has, the more likely they are to be homosexual because her body will start to see them as some sort of foreign invader and will try to feminize the fetus, and as a result, a lot of people have become homosexual. Now, um, that kind of thing, suppose, I mean, if a god was clever, if a god was smart, if a god really did care about folks and wanted to make sure that overpopulation didn't happen, then maybe that god would build homosexuality into the, the human makeup. And just because your book doesn't say that, or says the opposite of that, well, I mean, I don't know how it is that you think you can trust that book, but, I mean, you know, have you ever considered the possibility that you're wrong, and that actually if there was a god, that god would want some homosexuals? I mean, 10% of the population isn't much, Sean. And it might even be less than that. I'll have to look it up. But seriously, think about it. Have you? Ever? Rather, God has, on top of that, said that human marriage is the, is the constitution, or is the constitution in which uh, sexual relations is to take place. Or rather, God's followers have claimed that. Until God shows up and makes faith no longer necessary, Sean, I don't have any reason to believe you. So, yeah, it may be written that way in your holy book, but so what? I'm not saying that the relationship we have to God is sexual. Rather, I'm saying that all the amazing things about sex, that level of intimacy and knowing another person, that is only a picture, a physical picture of a spiritual truth. And that being said, it's done within a marriage covenant, which is an agreement between a man and a woman. And assuming for a moment that your God is real, what other than God's say-so forces it to be a man and a woman? Why not a woman and a woman? Or a man and a man? Why not? Other than your God's say-so, why not? Just as our relationship to God is based upon the covenant, the covenant that God entered into through Jesus Christ, he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. We can only approach God through a covenant. And so any sex outside of marriage, whether it be heterosexual or homosexual, sex before or outside of marriage, or adultery, having sex with someone other than your marriage partner, is a violation of the covenant relationship that God had established marriage to reflect. And once again, we're back to God's ego problem, his self-image issue. He's created all these special things, these little clubs we're supposed to be part of, and we have to want to be part of them. And if we never become part of them, then certain things that we want desperately, we're just simply not allowed to have. Okay, come on, think about it. If a human did this to us, we'd think that human was a dick. So why does God get to be an exception? Men and, men and women have roles. I, I know in a, cu a culture like ours, gender roles are seen as artificial and homosexuality is seen as natural. But that's an extremely, extremely liberal view when it's actually, according to the Bible, the other way around, that homosexuality is unnatural and gender roles are very natural. God designed men and women differently. And those of us who actually value our individuality and our ability to pick our own way in life would say to that God, fuck off. I mean, seriously, would you let your parents determine your job for you? Would you let your parents tell you who to marry? So why on earth should we let a God tell us? I'm sorry, but no, my life is my own. I am my own person. I'm going to do my own thing. And so long as I don't hurt anybody, no one else should object. Women, for example, are maternal. They give birth to children. They have more of that affection for giving birth. Uh, you know, life to, to the young and spending time in nurturing them. And that's, that's a motherly thing, and that, that should be embraced. And I think what we'll, what we'll find is as we move in our God-defined gender roles and roles as being made in the image of God, we'll actually find our fulfillment. And I happen to find my fulfillment making art, telling stories, Hanging out with my friends, even. Rollerblading. I find fulfillment in a lot of places, and none of it has to do 
with being a mother. I don't ever want to give birth. Sure, I love kids. I have plenty of friends who have children, and I've made friends with those kids. I've taken care of them. I've babysat for them sometimes. But the closest I ever want to come to being a mother is taking care of little Columbia here. Seriously. I, I mean, I love my kitty. Oh, aren't you wonderful? But that's as close as I really want to get to being an actual mother. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have a role somebody assigned to me. I pick my own way. A lot of us do. All of us should. That's freedom. Freedom is wonderful. I mean, seriously, if I didn't have freedom, then heaven, paradise, it can't exist. And being beholden to your God is the opposite of having freedom. It's just that simple. Now the question is this, why would God make people gay? And that's the assumption that he made you gay, when the Bible clearly says God only made two people, Adam and Eve, and they, they weren't gay. In fact, they were sinless, and they were given a choice to love and obey God, and yet they chose to disobey God, and thus engaged in a sinful behavior, thus rendering them sinners, and then we were born into a sinful, fallen condition. And your all-loving, all-powerful God just let this happen, couldn't fix it, couldn't see it coming in the first place, even though he's supposed to be all-knowing. Really? Uh, come on. Assuming the fucker exists at all, your god is a dick. I keep telling ya. And if you have questions about Adam and Eve, like why would God make them knowing they would disobey, and other considerations like that, I actually made a video where I answer at great length uh, many of the considerations uh, regarding Adam and Eve. Well, to be perfectly honest, Sean, I can only stomach so much of your stuff, but I'll give it a look at some point, I guess. Still, I can't imagine it's anything other than prevarication, but I'll withhold judgment till I watch the fucking video. Now, you may have heard Christians or people in the clergy who say, well, I'm a Christian and I think homosexuality is okay. And while that may sound really nice, because we all want to accommodate everyone, I think that's a great disservice, not just to the Bible and what it teaches, but also to the person you're telling that to, because you're deceiving them. Well, either that or you're actually wrong about God, Sean. Have you ever considered that possibility? When the Bible clearly says, if you want to follow Christ, you have to choose to take up your cross and deny yourself. Deny myself, Sean? I, no. No. I'm not going to do that. Until and unless someone can show me, in a way that does not require faith, that heaven is real, and I get into it by following your stupid book, I'm going to follow my own path. That's just all there is to it. I'll do my damnedest not to hurt people, but I'm sorry, I'm not going to go around denying myself my entire life for a very, very, very uncertain reward from a God I don't approve of, going to a place, heaven, that frankly doesn't sound like paradise to me because all you're supposed to do is spend your time worshipping God. Where's the fun in that? I'm sorry, no. I want to have a good time with my life. I want to enjoy my existence. And I'm not going to do that by denying myself. No. The idea that, you know, well, if I feel this way, that I'm a homosexual, then God must be okay with it because I wouldn't feel this way if he wasn't. Well, then why does the Bible tell us we have to deny ourselves? Because it was written by human masochists. Have you ever considered that possibility, Shawnee Boy? We are aware that the human condition is such that many people, each and every one of us at one time or another, are attracted to doing the wrong thing. But Sean, did you ever consider that you might be wrong about what the wrong thing is? If it turns out that your God is not real, then that book of yours and all the rules in it, well, they're not real either. They're made up by fallible humans, and there's no reason we should trust them. So, uh, until and unless you can prove that that book is true, I'm not following it. It's that simple. And so, what is, what is a person to do? Is the homosexual not to ever know true love, never to have a relationship with another person because they have to deny themselves, because they have to acknowledge that they have a sin nature and that they have to obey God and, and, and simply abstain? You know, is that really fair? Is, is it fair for them to be born with a, a nature that makes them want to do certain things and, and they can't fulfill them? To be honest, no, it's not fair. And your God is a dick for making it that way. At the same time, I will say this. There are solutions.
for the person who says, you know what, God, I acknowledge that you tell me it's wrong, and I honor, I want to honor what you commanded more than I want to fulfill my own desires. Sorry, Venom, but no. I am not going to spend my entire life being miserable, never getting to have what I want, while straight people get to have the joy of their lives just to satisfy your god's fucking ego. It's not gonna happen. If your god wanted to come up with rules that didn't actually make the rest of us miserable, well, you know, maybe I'd consider following the fucker if he'd actually prove he was real. But the way things are, no. I'm sorry. I am not going to be miserable for your God's entertainment. No. And so the homosexual community, I find, has been so alienated from God because, first of all, you have the so-called Christians who are saying God hates you. So that's not an incentive to, uh, first of all, come to Christ. Why would they if they're getting a message of hatred? And they have no ability to stop sinning because the Bible says that they're a slave to sin and no one is a slave willing, willingly and they were born that way. That, and some of us don't even see it as sin in the first place. I mean, again, nobody gets hurt, we enjoy it, and everyone's happy, except for the folks who think there's this God that objects to it. And, you know, you can't even prove your God is real, and you can't even prove that what you believe about your God is real, given that, you know, the Abrahamic God has at least three religions tied to it that say, no, no, we have the true word and all that stuff. I mean, why should any of us trust you when, in fact, what we can do is find pleasure in our own lives and find other people who find our pleasure also pleasurable and everyone's happy? You know, where's, where's the problem? Where's the fucking sin? Really? I mean, why should your God hate that? You'd, you'd think that a loving God would want the best for us, would want for us to be happy. And if he saw some sort of taint in us, he'd fucking fix it. Well, your God hasn't fixed it. And your God clearly could. So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sean, but... There's, there's no way, I, I don't buy your story about your God, and I, I think that if your God did exist, that none of this would ever be an issue. So I, I just, I don't buy what you're selling. I really don't. And until we start presenting that message, it's not going to make sense to them. We're going to alienate them from God, but we're going to make them hate God even more than they already possibly do, because they, they feel they have a a desire within them which God is telling them they can't fulfill. That must be very frustrating indeed. I got news for you over here, Sean. The fact is that that message is a large part of what alienates a lot of us from God in the first place. Uh, the fact is that your message isn't any better than the folks who say that God hates fags. It's really not. Because basically you are saying that God hates fags. Like it or not, you're telling us we can't be who we are because of God's command. Uh, that is, God hates fags. You're just not saying it in the nasty, rude way. What more do you want? I mean, that's just the facts. So what's, what is someone to do? If you're of the mind, you know what, I am going to repent from sin, and regardless of how strong my feelings are towards my, my sexual desires, I'm going to deny myself as best as I can and follow after Christ. What am I now to do? Am I meant to be single for the rest of my life? I've heard many success stories of gay men marrying lesbian women. Well, let's see, I'm a lesbian. Hmm, I gotta find a gay guy to get hitched to. Nah, Prof MTH is already married. Uh, wait a minute, I've got it. I'll get married to you, Venom. You're, you're gay, right? I, at least that's what I thought. Anyway, not the point, not the point. Point is, no, I don't want to get married to any man, gay or straight. I want to get married to a woman if I ever get married. And right now, I just want to have a couple of dates or something. Maybe once in a while, get down and do nasty. You know what I mean? I mean, come on. And don't get me started on that whole no sex before marriage thing. I wouldn't buy a car I hadn't test driven either. I'm just saying. They're willing to say, God, you come first before you before me. I'm putting God before myself. And that's exactly what we all need to do. But why? Why would we need to do that? Why would God even want that? Why would an all-powerful, all-knowing, all-loving God say, me first, 
No, 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 I, I come before all of you. You know, I don't have any needs because I'm all powerful. I don't have any wants because I'm all powerful and I know everything. But no, no, I come first. I'm better than all of you. You treat me as number one over here. You know, I mean, come on. How does that make any fucking sense? It doesn't, Sean. It doesn't make sense. Your God is a dick. Assuming he exists at all, which I don't think he does. He sounds like the creation of imaginative humans to me. Just saying. And so I hope this video was, while many people may disagree with some of the things that I say, is a biblical perspective. It's an honest perspective. I'm not teaching a message of hatred. Horseshit, Sean. What you've said is God hates fags. You've dressed it up to be all nicey-nice, but that's basically, in essence, what you've just said. You've said, you're gay, God doesn't like it, you have to change it. That's God hates fags, Sean, like it or not. If God loved fags, if God was okay with fags, well, hey, then he'd have no problem whatsoever with people being homosexual and acting on it. No, you've said God hates fags. Till next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying, don't be fooled, don't run on automatic, think. Ignorance killed the cat. Curiosity was framed.